What's up my friends? Welcome back, you're watching Harv, video order stuff, and for you guys today, I'm gonna to be grading Red Raw 8K for the first time ever. Recently I tried grading ARRI 4444 12 bit footage for the first time and it's lovely. I had a great time doing it and I'll link that video below if you're interested in viewing that. And I just hope this is entertaining for you. So what am I waiting for? Roll the intro. <laughs> Of course, if you enjoy this free and unsponsored content, please do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. It really means a lot to me. So I'm not going to do a raw versus log or raw versus 444 or raw versus 420 video, all of that kind of stuff. There's loads of good videos out there and plus I don't have time in this video. Do Google it, there's lots of info out there. All I'll say is that RAW formats capture all the information coming off the camera sensor, and all other formats tend to be compressed in one way or another. And that's a ludicrously simple way of putting it, but there you go. The first thing you need to do if you're grading Red RAW for the first time is to download the Red RAW processing software for your editor. Don't worry, it's free and you can get it from Red's website. After that, you can import Red files as normal. Now in Final Cut, and you can see I've imported my first clip and it already looks gorgeous. I know with a little bit of work it's going to look absolutely stunning. One thing to note is that most of these clips are in DCI 8K, so you'll need to be cognizant of the aspect ratio that you're outputting at. YouTube, of course, is 16x9, so it will require a little bit of trimming. I'm using Final Cut Pro, and the first thing I noticed was just how slowly they ran. It's not surprising at all because the file sizes tend to be huge. You can choose to switch to optimized media or proxy media, which will speed things up massively. But just know that A, it'll take forever to transcode your files, and B, you lose the amazing raw flexibility that I'm just about to explore. So for now, I'm gonna leave the raw file as it is, I'm gonna grade it as it is, and just turn on my performance mode. Back in Final Cut now, and we'll take a look at the amazing features that this red raw can give us. So I'm going to go up to the information tab first and then come down to where it says modify red raw settings and this is where it gets really cool. Of course I can change the ISO to whatever I want and this is just so cool and one of the reasons why raw must save cinematographers so much time. We also have access to the Kelvin or color temperature and tint which is just two more things we don't have to worry about in camera. FLUT stands for floating point lookup table and as I understand it, it's a version of exposure. I'm not gonna touch it this time, I'm just gonna, if I need to tweak the exposure, I'm gonna tweak the ISO itself. An independent slider to adjust the shadows, how cool is that, I love it. Last bit in this section is the DRX, which stands for Dynamic Range Extension, which seems to stretch out the footage a little bit in a non-destructive way. However, because of the way I'll be grading this footage, I don't think I'll need this slider. And then we have saturation, contrast, brightness, and exposure, of which brightness and exposure I will not be using because why wouldn't I just use ISO? Ditto with the saturation and contrast because of the way I want to grade this. I'll be adjusting those in a different way. You can select the colour space that you want to work with, but I will say that a lot of guys that, that grade Red Raw prefer to keep a really big colour space for as long as possible throughout the grading process for greater flexibility. The default colour space is Dragon Colour 2, which just looks amazing straight off the bat. We also have Red Colour 4, Red Color 3, Red Wide Gamma RGB, Rec 2020, DCI P3, Rec 709, and Profoto RGB. And then we have a variety of gammas. We have, of course, Red Gamma 4, Red Log Film, BT 1886, Rec 709, HDR 2084, HLG, Log 3G10, and Log 3G12. The combination of color space and gamma will massively affect the way that we grade. For example, here's a straight Rec 709 for both the color space and gamma, and you can see it doesn't need a lot more. And then on the flip side, here's Dragon Color 2 paired with the Red Log Film Gamma and just look how beautifully flat it is. I suppose this depends greatly on the project that you're working on. So in this case, I'm gonna take the advice, I'm gonna keep the color space big. Oh my God, it's hot in the UK today. I keep having to get up and mop my brow. You didn't need to know that. For getting back into it, the best, for me, the best way to approach grading raw is to change 
the color space and the contrast curve to uh, similar to what you've used most in the past, which for me would be Sony's S Log 2 and S Gamma S Cine S Gamma 2 Cine 3. What, what is it? S Gamma 3 Cine. Of course it is. It's just just the heat. Of course, you're not going to be able to get those exact color spaces and curves, but you can change it to similar ones, which I have done. So now that's done, let's let's get grading. So here's the ungraded footage, and then once I'd applied my grade, I ended up with this. So let's jump into Final Cut now, and I'll show you my workflow. As you can see, I've already got my color space and gamma set to Dragon Color 2 and Red Log Film. So I'm just gonna hit apply, and then we can start the grade. So regardless of the type of footage and grading, I almost always add an instance of color wheels as the first alteration I make to any clip. I actually explain the sequence of alterations I make to clips in between grading this one and the next clip. So hold tight, that's coming in a minute. Next, I'm gonna drop on a lookup table, and the way I like to do it is actually to grade into the lookup table. So apply it early and then make alterations. Now I know this is a little unorthodox, but this is what works for me. Next, I add color curves, and as always, I like to add lots of control points so that I can go in and manipulate the contrast curve and really just bring out the best in the footage. And what a time to do it when grading raw 8K footage. All the time, I'm checking on that waveform to check I'm not doing anything crazy. And this has made a beautiful difference to the footage. Just look at those brighter areas, particularly the hairs on the monkey's head. You really can push and pull this footage quite a lot. Next, I add a second instance of color wheels. And the reason I do this is I position it after our lookup table and any tweaks I make affect the final output. All I'm doing is giving this just a touch more contrast so that it really starts to pop. And this looks pretty good to me. It's not an over the top grade, it's fairly natural, but dear god, that red footage is stunning. So usually when I approach a grade, my chain of alterations goes like this. I start off with color wheels to make exposure and color correction adjustments. I then add curves for contrast adjustments, and you know me, I like to make micro adjustments. Um, definitely see my video about curves because I think it's one of the most uh, interesting videos that I've made for people who are interested in grading. I'll link it below, of course. Uh, and then, of course, I add a lookup table, and then I'll add a final instance of color wheels just for final tweaks. I usually use a waveform just to see where I am and um, just make some tweaks at the end of my chain. Diving back in, and we'll grade this clip. Here you can see the before. As before, this is in red log, and then here's the final grade. Jumping back into Final Cut now, I'll show you how I did this one. The temptation with this clip would be to simply just change the gamma and color space to Rec. 709. That way you're almost guaranteed to get a very natural look with pretty good skin tones, but I'd rather for this clip it looks a little bit more high key, a bit more of a fashion video kind of style. So I've set it up as before with Dragon Color 2 and Red Log Film. I'm following my same game plan here with my chain of alterations. I've got my color wheels and then my lookup table with my favorite go-to LUT, which is the Phantom LUTs Utopia, which is linked below, of course. But I do want to see how this footage reacts to the other Phantom lookup tables. I tried all five and four of them brought out things that I wasn't so sure about with the footage. Either changing the shadows to color I didn't want them to be, or they made the skin tones just a touch too magenta. And really, I found the one that really worked for this footage was the Phantom Lutz Ice Blue lookup table. Very apt, as she has blue eyes. Next, I've got my color curves in place and I've got my waveform out, and I'm gonna do my micro adjustments to bring out the best in this footage. Next, for something a little more unconventional, I want to add just a touch of color to her cheeks, a little bit more contour, just almost like she's blushing. So I'm using a shape mask and I've selected the color just on her cheek there, and I'm gonna be very, very subtle about this. Just pushing the color slightly away from magenta, and I'm adding just a hair of saturation. Finally, I've added an instance of color wheels at the end once again, which again just affects the final output of our video, and I'm just gonna pay some attention to the highlights and shadows just to give it that extra bit of pop. So there we have it. We went from our lovely flat looking log to this punchy looking final grade. However, using these third party lookup tables got me thinking, what about the ones that Red supply us with? Well, I just downloaded the Red LUT kit from Red's website and it's a conversion LUT for Red Log Film. And here you can see the result of using them is a very natural look. 
I'm not making any other tweaks here apart from adding that one lookup table. Oh, monkey looks good. I'd probably want a little more contrast here, but you can easily do that. I thought I'd just throw this final clip in just to demonstrate it one more time. For me, using red log film and then applying this lookup table is much better option than just going with Rec 709 for your color space and gamma. So what are the takeaways from grading red raw? Well, obviously the footage I'm using is drop dead gorgeous. I mean, it's from Red's website. Can you imagine if it wasn't? So it doesn't take a lot to get it looking quite good. I think if I was working with RAW for an entire project, I would convert the color space and gamma to the ones that I mentioned before. And then I would probably do a trial grade just to see, just to check that I would be happy with it. And then I would go ahead and transcode the entire thing to a file format that's easier to work with. That way I know I'd be happy with the look and it wouldn't be too sluggish to work with. I really think that RAW shouldn't be seen as this kind of daunting file format that only the elite cinematographer guys work with. With the flexibility of being able to change the colour space and gamma, RAW can basically be whatever you want it to be. It can be log, it can be log with a different kind of curve, it can be a really contrasty Rec 709, you name it. And I imagine it would save cinematographers so much time. Anyway, that's over and out from a very hot hub. I hope you found this interesting and helpful. Of course, I've got a large back catalogue of videos about videography on this channel, of which YouTube recommends this hand-picked one for you. And the one below is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot a bit of video. See you guys.